our lightning presentations. Um, our first lightning presenters are Estelle Gittens and Greg Sheaf, who are going to talk to us about their insights and adventures in developing digital exhibitions to showcase Trinity Library collections. Um, Estelle Gittens has been assistant librarian in the Manuscripts and Archives Research Library at TCD since 2005. Her past experience includes working as an archivist at Christie's Auction House, the National Gallery of London and Enneclan. Uh, she's been a member of Trinity College Archives Committee, the Trinity College Information Compliance Committee and was Honorary Secretary of the Irish Society for Archives from 2007 to 2010. She's editor of the Manuscripts at Trinity blog and project lead on the library's 1916 blog project, Changed Utterly, Ireland and the Easter Rising. Greg Sheaf has also worked at the Library of Trinity College since 2005. He currently works as both a subject librarian for nursing and midwifery and is also the library's web services librarian. He oversees TCD library website and social media presence and he's actively involved in the technical administration of the library's online exhibitions. Greg has also co-authored a number of articles including Cochrane Reviews. So please welcome Estelle and Greg. So hello, hello everyone, and what we're going to be doing today is giving you a very quick romp, if you will, through what we're doing with online exhibitions in Trinity and how in our own little way we're being a little bit loud. So I'm going to start with a very iconic image of the long room, I'm sure most people are aware of that, and you can see there's an exhibition going on in the background there, I think that's the Great War Revisited from about eight years ago. Um, People have been going to the long room as somewhere to go to for about, well, since Victorian times. And since then, we've started putting stuff in it which weren't books for people to look at, exhibitions, if you will. So currently, in the long room, there's an exhibition on what the Book of Kells is about. That's due to be refreshed in the near future. We've also had these kind of larger exhibitions, which run for about six months, which tell a story. Okay, so for instance, that was the Great War Revisited, uh, the one up at the moment which is probably going to be the last one, is to do with myths in children's books. We've also had little exhibitions going on in little glass cases, which tell a different story as well. So some of the bigger exhibitions um, are mentioned there. Again, the last one there is Upon the Wild Waves. Um, but there are things to do with Brian Baru, to do with music, to do with literature, to do with art. Lots of different stories we've been trying to tell. And the more recent ones have had these online components to them. There have also been these little smaller or mini exhibitions going on. So these have um, little, little um, groups of artifacts or books or whatever which are put together in glass cases and these tell a little story for a very small amount of time. So they might be to do with a conference which is going on. We put together some stuff to do with that. Or they might be something to impress the great and good. So you may when the Obamas were over, I think you saw pictures of very bored female Obamas looking at their family history. Uh, but uh, that's the sort of thing, you know, we, we put those sort of small things on. Mainly it's for conferences and the like, and people are generally a bit more interested in them. Okay, but they're very ephemeral, they, they don't last. They're, they're there for a week or two and then they're gone. So what we wanted to do was start making experiments with some of those smaller exhibitions so that they last for longer. And the way to do that is to put them online. Now, we've also then started looking at how we could do things with bigger exhibitions, because not everything is necessarily going to be a physical exhibition. Can we do large virtual exhibitions as well using the same technology? Okay, so we started looking at this. We were told you, as part of our strategic plan goals, we look at what you can do with the virtual space, with virtual exhibitions. So we thought the easiest way to do this was actually just to do some. Rather than talking about it endlessly, we thought, okay, we're going to roll up our sleeves and find out how to do this. So we did that. Okay, so we started mucking around with various tools. Um, Estelle had done a very quick exhibition back in the, the mists of time using Flash. Um, so we put that into a new tool to see what it would look like. And the tool that we started off using was basically just this, you've probably seen this before, when you go into a gallery online, you know how it zooms into the picture and you can go between the pictures. That's using basically JavaScript really easy to do. You can go to a website, you can put in the image you want and the date and the text you want and it will spit out a gallery. 
because these exhibitions are really just galleries. They're galleries of images with accompanying text. That's what they are. So we started playing around with that, and that worked pretty well. It was pretty easy to do, and I could do it. Okay, And it didn't take very long to, to do it. But we started looking around, and we heard about this thing called Google Open Gallery. Right? And Sorry, I ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> as, as I was saying, I just went, I, as she was talking about the even as a girl, I just went, oh. <laughs> now, but what I think is the important thing to take from what Adam was saying is that this is a gift horse, but you should look it in the mouth. You should always think, this is, so this is free and it's great and it seems to do it, but what are Google getting out of this? You do need to think about that. Okay? And I think what they're getting out of things like this is it's demonstrating that they aren't necessarily all about money and all about ads. This is their cultural, you know, trying to do a cultural thing for the good of the world almost. Okay, now whether that's true or not, you may want to uh, think about. But one thing I can tell you is it's quite easy to work with and it does spit out some quite interesting visuals and it really is pretty easy to work with. And the things which Estelle are going to show you in a minute were done using it. Okay, but they also have this bigger tool called Google Cultural Institute you have to partner with Google for that, and, but it does do these amazing big exhibitions and they're quite easy to do. Okay, so where it comes to us being loud, both this and this one, which we've just recently launched on 1916, got me and Estelle on the telly. Okay, and if you think talking to a room full of, uh, of your peers is, is uh, intimidating, knowing that your 15 seconds of fame is going to go out to half a million people on the news that night, that's very intimidating. But it did get us publicity and it got people talking about it and a new exhibition is going to launch hopefully on St. Patrick's Day to do with the Clark Studio and some of the people in here were working on that. So again, you'll get to be able to see that in a little while. So I'm going to hand over to Estelle who's going to talk about how we've been using this with our academics. Okay, thanks Greg. Um, so what were our aims really with the online exhibitions? Well, they were twofold. Strategically, it was to introduce the collections to a um, much wider audience and to promote the breadth of the collections, uh, but also to collaborate with academic colleagues to further integrate the collections into research and teaching. But there are other benefits as well, as, as Greg said, visibility. These collections are all discoverable from our library catalogues and through the library's digital collection site. But the online exhibitions interpret them. Um, they provide context and they help to make them more visible. Uh, the online exhibitions are appreciated particularly by our communications department. Journalists just absolutely adore them. They've had very big impact in that area. Um, they're also very easily shared on social media, so they reach a wider audience, but also for us uh, in the archives, a non-traditional audience. Um, and they also assist the university in communicating its unique selling point. We are, after all, in a very kind of rankings-aware um, situation, and what says unique more than unique and distinct archival collections? Uh, so in helping us to communicate the breadth of collections, I mean, what do you know about TCD manuscripts? The Book of Kells, medieval collections, literary collections? It, it helps us to get a bit more out there, to uh, explain that we have something other than uh, medieval manuscripts. Um, so these are two past exhibitions. Uh, one was on Middle Eastern manuscripts in the library and another is on a collection of 20th century um, architectural papers. Uh, but the online exhibition format we've used quite recently and quite extensively in our decade of commemoration activity. The library at this point last year wasn't really very well known for our collection of 1916 material. But our online activities to promote the 1916 collections have actually drawn a fairly large amount of attention, and this is where I introduce you to Change Utterly, if you don't know of it already. Um, it's a weekly blog project um, on our 1916 collections. If you want to interact with us on Twitter, we're tcdlib1916 on Twitter. Um, it was started a year in advance of the anniversary last April, and um, it functions, it also functions as an online exhibition of all 52 items or collections covered in the blog. Each thumbnail here, it, you click in and you get the blog post behind it and then all the collections, uh, connections through to the catalogues. 
Um, we created, uh, we also created a spin-off exhibition on the Google Cultural Institute on just one of the items. And the Twitter engagement has been absolutely key to Changed Utterly. We've had a high level of engagement with academics, general interest researchers, postgrads and student teachers. But the other aim for the library is to partner with Trinity Academics and to contribute to teaching, learning and research. Uh, as you know, the contribution that primary source materials can make to the learning process cannot be underestimated. And we already contribute through the classes that I've just put up on the slide behind me. The online exhibitions are another tool that can be used in collaboration with academics. Here I'm using the example of a very fruitful collaboration that we have with the medieval art uh, lecturer, Dr. Laura Cleaver. And here are two of the exhibitions, which I will race through, that um, we produced previously with her. Um, this is our most recent one with her, uh, History Books of the Anglo-Norman World, which coincides with a major <coughs> research project that she's involved in. And it also coincided with a major international conference that she had last year. This was provided as part of the online conference pack and, um, and it also directed many delegates back to the library's collection. We found they were turning up in the reading rooms quite a lot because of it. It opened up new avenues of research for them. Um, the online exhibition also had an advantage over the physical counterpart in that we could put more material into it. For example, such as this one, which is the Matthew Paris Book of St Albans, which was very difficult to display physically, but we could put that up in the online exhibition. This slide just gives you an idea of how Laura uses it in her teaching and the value that Laura gets from it. Um, but all of these exhibits just demonstrate the collaboration between one archivist and one academic. For the future, we are trying to look at ways of working with uh, art history postgraduates, firstly PhDs um, through blog posts and the curation of their own digital exhibits. But last week we also made our first foray into the group dynamic with the MPhil class in art history and a mystery object research exercise, which has started as a class run by Laura and myself. We give them all mystery objects and it's, they research them and they come back to us with a catalog entry. Um, and so that, it's a pilot study. We're going to see how that develops. It could either come back to us as, as blog projects or it could come back as um, we might turn it into an online exhibition. It depends how the engagement goes. So these exhibits work to both our benefit. We can demonstrate the importance of the archives to Trinity Academic Research, but also in teaching and in skills development. And the academics get to demonstrate their connection to the collections and the impact of their research through channels other than publication. And this has become a major feature of the research excellence framework in the UK, and it might have more of an impact over here as well. Thank you. Please get in touch. Okay, thank you very much, Estelle and Greg. Uh, so next up, you've heard about them already, or their, the, the slip uh, venture from Jane. Um, so we'll let you give them some insight um, on it themselves. Uh, Claire Mornan and Helene, Helena Byrne um, will show us how the Slip Ireland venture has been blowing all of our preconceptions about students out of the water and teaching us all a thing or two. Um, Claire Mornan completed a BA in philosophy at TCD in 2013 and is a recent graduate of the Masters in Library and Information Studies from UCD. And she's been involved with the Slip venture since its beginning and uh, was probably involved with organising their very successful conference yesterday. Helena Byrne completed her Masters in Library and Information Studies at UCD last year and having previous, previously completed a postgraduate diploma in comparative, comparative Literature from UCD and a BA in Cultural Resource Studies from Dundalk in Institute of Technology. Um, so, Helena and Claire, take it away. I'm setting my timer as well, just in case I go over. Um, so thank you for having us. So um, we're Slip Ireland. So hands up, before today, who has heard of Slip Ireland? Oh, this is good. This is really good. So it's much better than we expected. So ideas. 
where did Slip Ireland come from? So we just recently graduated from UCD, and there's two core modules that kind of helped inspire this idea. The first one was a module on the foundations of information studies. So it's quite theoretically based. We're reading lots of different papers every week. And then at the end of the, court, the module, we had to do our own research and write a literature review on a topic of our interest. So that meant we had about 50 students writing about different subjects. And I was particularly interested in the relevance of oral history with information studies and library field. And it was fascinating, but I had no one to talk to because nobody else was reading the same literature I was reading. And I was reading all these great papers, so I was like, oh, how am I going to talk to people about this? And we'd already taken a module of management um, of information studies by Jane Burns. Where's Jane? Oh, there we go. <laughs> so this was really inspirational because we did a blog post every week as well about the literature we were reviewing in the management class. And this was like, oh, this is actually a really good platform. Maybe we could merge talking about theory and the blog platform for discussing the literature that we want to talk about, get connected with people outside the classroom who are also interested in the same area. So that's where the ideas came from. And it took a bit of working around, but we came up with the name SLIP. So SLIP stands for Students, Students Librarians, and Information Professionals. So we're SLIP Ireland. So if anybody in any other country wants to take up SLIP, we're happy to give the format and platform away. <laughs> so they could be SLIP whatever country they're in. <laughs> so you can pass on the word. <laughs> so what is SLIP? So we have basically like an online platform. We have blog, Twitter, Facebook. And we have, our format is, we have monthly blog posts by students. So we have a reflection on a paper. So it has to be based on some sort of literature. It can be an academic paper or it could be a blog post. It'd be something just discussing literature or you know, theory around information studies. So we have that once a month, and then we try to have a Twitter chat about that, and so engaging the community, people actually working in the field or interested in that area. Then we have, hopefully, quarterly guest posts from professionals in the field who want to talk about just anything that they want to talk about to communicate with the professions and the students. And then we have a spotlight on Liz workplaces. So our first one was on the Cregan uh, Library in uh, St. Pat's, and it's just places in the uh, community that people can go visit. So St. Pat's have opened up a coffee shop in their library. They're trying to encourage the community to come in. We want to have you know, spotlights in these kind of places that other people in the Liz field can visit, but also the general. And um, we had then a tag for our conference as well, which we'll talk about soon. So I'm just going to skip over this first. So student recruits. So we were students last year. Now we're starting in the work field. So we tried to recruit students from the current year. Uh, we went visited DBS. We gave a presentation on SLIP. We went to UCD. We went to Jane's class. And from that, we were able to get some new recruits to help join in the SLIP Ireland venture and you know, manage our Twitter accounts and um, social media and contributing to the blog and the conference. And next year, again, we'd like to visit the same schools and hopefully even get more people from Ulster University involved in the project as well. Kind of like each year getting fresh people in to help um, run SLIP. So I'm going to hand you over to Claire now about SLIP Ireland. Thanks, Lena. Um, so yesterday we had our first conference, and the idea arose from one of our Twitter chats, which was about the gap between students, researchers, and practitioners in the field. And so the aim of the conference was to bring together those groups and give students a platform to talk about what they're learning about and what they're passionate about. And we had about 50 in attendance, and it was a really great success. Um, and I think we effectively smashed the stereotype of lazy students. Um, so we had never planned an event like this before, and we learned a lot on the job. Um, so one of the first things we did was look at other great organizations, such as ANSL and the Career Development Group, to see how we could incorporate suitable aspects into our comparatively shorter event. And we had really great support from people in the field, especially Lib Focus and UCD and Jane. Jane, you should be up here with us. We're talking about you so much. <laughs> um, so I'd like to just go through a few of um, aspects of planning the event. So the first thing is the theme was the best thing I learned in library school. So that was broad enough to incorporate anything that students wanted to talk about. Um, and we wanted the conference to be quite informal, so all the presentations were five-minute lightning presentations. And uh, the best presentation we had, we had a competition, was Jesse Waters, who talked about his um, capstone project, which was developing a 1916 walking tour app. We also had a poster competition, and the winner of that was a group of UCD students talking about the reference collection. 
And UCD were kind enough to let us host the event there. And we were sponsored by Interleaf Technology and by Jane Burns. <laughs> That's the last time, Jane, I promise. Um, so we also used Eventbrite uh, to organize the event. And I cannot extol the virtues of Eventbrite enough. It's free to use for free events like ours. And it provides you with really great marketing and promotion tools and um, analytics, which I can talk about now. So this is the traffic to our event by Prage. And you can see that most of it is from our blog. Um, and the rest is split largely between Facebook and event by cross promotion, um, which turned out to be really important for us. Um, and that's advertisements for our event that appear on other events pages. Um, kind of, if you like this event, then you might like ours. Um, so I'd like to look at the sales now. And as you can see, uh, Facebook was the most important part of our sales, which was um, kind of surprising considering the traffic um, from our blog was most of it, and that wasn't reflected in the sales. And we didn't anticipate how important the cross-promotion would be in sales. That 17% might not have been there if we used a lesser-known platform. Um, so here's some feedback from the event. Um, we know Twitter is a really important place for librarians <laughs> to network, and you can catch up on our tweets um, using hashtag SLIP2016. Um, so what is the future for SLIP? The future looks bright. We will have more blog posts this year. We want to grow the conversation that we've started. We also want to um, advocate for students and become a platform that students can rely on. Um, so we finished our conference last night. So now we're looking forward to SLIP 2017. Thank you. So we want you. So we want you to get involved. SLIP Ireland is about bridging the gap between students and professionals, but that's not our the only thing we do. We want to bridge the gap between theory and practice. We want to discuss these things. So we need you to get involved. So we're discussing the theory in the blog posts. So we'd like you to get involved in the discussions on Twitter or on a Facebook page. And we'd also like you to contribute to maybe our guest post or to review your workplace. If there's some if place that you work where people can come visit, you can get the public in or other list professionals can visit you, we'd like you to do a review on your place as well. So you can get in touch with us through our uh, blog, we've got our email, and we have Facebook and Twitter. We also have a poster, which is out on display over there, so this also has all the contact information as well for us. So please get involved. We need you to be able to make this a success. So thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Claire and Lena.